Hey everybody, I'm meteorologist Gavin Sandel. Well, winter is by far the most volatile season in our area. For that reason, it's subject to a lot of speculation. One way you can get a head start on winter is from the 200-year-old Farmer's Almanac predictions. But in actuality, we don't just follow one, we follow two Farmer's Almanacs typically in our country. The first one that I'll show is the aptly named Farmer's Almanac. It's been in operation for over 200 years since 1818. And the one on the right side with a very old timey cover, that's the old Farmer's Almanac because it's older. It's the actually longest running periodical that's still continuously running. That was founded in 1792. And these both typically release every year during the late stages of the summer to the early fall, and they've been in operation for over 200 years. The way that they forecast is just a little bit different between the two. The Farmer's Almanac forecast for seven distinct regions, which you'll see in a moment, and they split it up a little more for the old Farmer's Almanac. That's over 18 different regions, which you'll also see in their current forecast in just a little bit. But you'll also see the data as well. The data is where uh, things can get a little bit tricky with both Farmer's Almanacs. They're a little bit more traditional with how they put out their data. So we'll talk about the regular Farmer's Almanac first. They really go with just solar data and climo data, nothing crazy, just stuff with the sun, stuff with astrono astronomy, excuse me, which isn't necessarily bad, but I personally don't think it's the very best. They kind of step it up a little bit in the old Farmer's Almanac. They take more solar data, they take astronomical data as well, stuff with climatology, and but they do also include stuff with satellites as well. But neither is a great uh, data set, which I'll explain why in just a moment as well. But like I mentioned, both of these uh, released uh, their articles in the late stages of the summer. This is the Old Farmer's Almanac, which released at the end of August. And they split up our area in two distinct areas. To the north, mild and dry is expected in northern Trumbull and northern Mercer counties. If you head further south, they're expecting cold and snowy conditions this winter from about young Youngstown South. Going to the other one, the Farmer's Almanac, you could see they split in seven regions and the entire state of Ohio and very, very far western Pennsylvania is in this very cold and snowy region. But you can tell by looking at this map, the, the words are cold, snowy. They give you a lot of the same words, but they're very vague wording as well, which is one of my gripes with the Farmer's Almanac. You could see in the last five years, cold, flaky, snowy is all sorts of things that they've talked about. And I don't really think it's the best way to really approach it. So what we're going to do is talk about uh, and comparing and what their track record really is. So over the last five years, they've really given a lot of cold, a lot of snowy. So if we interpret this as colder than average and snowier than average, let's take a look at their track record. Wow, a lot of X's here. Really only the cold year from last year was the one that verified because the temperature just got a little bit below average. But in the last five years, it has been very, very warm and it's also been less snowier than average across our area. So uh, in terms of track record, maybe the Farmer's Almanac is not the best way to get it. Even uh, the chances of them getting a right forecast is just a little bit higher than the groundhog is, Punxsutawney Phil. So to get the Valley's best winter forecast, you'll have to wait until November 11th. I'm sure you can do that. Where Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm will be releasing his yearly weir winter predictions on the WFMJ website and the Storm Tracker 21 app. For Weather 101, I'm Gavin Sandell.